okay guys uh, we have um, analyzed word in terms of uh, semantic features and we arrived at uh, the conclusion that no conclusion could be made about it okay it's uh, not a semantically identified unit word is not a semantically identified unit so let's move on to the third a uh, second feature okay I mean second approach where we will see uh, phonetic or phonological features of uh, word phonetic in general terms terms in phonological in specific linguistic terms in language terms okay in a certain language okay about the system of a certain language so that's why we should call it a phonetic or phonological approach okay so like we are trying to find out some features uh, in uh, in terms of speech in general or some features in terms of the system of language in particular so we, we shall see what we have uh, there are three things here okay in semantic uh, sorry a phon a phonetic or phonological approach we have got we will analyze three features here and we'll see we'll test uh, you know the validity of word um, from three perspective the first one is val harmony the second is uh, stress and the third one is juncture and define each one accordingly uh, vowel harmony uh, you know is is found somewhere in some of the languages like uh, in Turkish language we have got a vowel harmony what does it mean here it means that you know if we have got a word in Turkish language we'll see that you know if there are two vowels so both of them um, must be alike both both of them must be the same okay like uh, if you have got a front vowel so the second vowel should also be a front vowel or if it is not if both of them are not uh, front vowels one is front and another is back vowel let's say then there must be another harmony that if one is rounded so the, the second must also be rounded okay so in terms of part of the term or in terms of right uh, rounding okay we'll have some harmony okay or um, it means that both of the vowels in a single word let's say or three vowels must be uh, must all be unrounded or rounded or all of them must be fronted vowels or back vowels okay so uh, this is what we we have to see okay like uh, look at the examples here okay and and the third feature is openness and closeness too okay like uh, if you have got uh, an open wall okay in the beginning uh, so the second wall wall must also be an open wall okay if, and if you have got a closed wall then we, it must be a closed wall uh, you have to remind yourselves um, the wall diagram I discussed in semester second okay uh, for part of the tongue and uh, you know uh, height of the tongue okay and the third feature was rounding okay lips rounding so we have got three features there in vowels okay uh, consonants must be different so that's why we, we couldn't see some feature related to consonants but we uh, can find one related to vowel okay so these three features are very necessary to define a certain vowel a vowel can be defined in terms of you know height of the tongue part of the tongue or rounding of the lips okay three features so if you remind yourself uh, you know you will you, you will see that I uh, I introduce the, the, the vowel diagram and I uh, place some vowels on different locations according to part of the tongue height of the tongue and rounding too okay so if you are clear about it move on to some of the examples from Turkish language okay um, in Turkish language all of all the vowels of a word must be either front or back or uh, rounded or unrounded or open or close okay so look at this one if so this if is basically uh, house it means house in English so if it means that you know both of the vowels are front and both of them are also unrounded okay so it means that we have got a vowel harmony in the word if in terms of 
part of the tongue that both of them uh, are actually front front vowels okay and both of them are unrounded likewise gaze okay it's written as goes but it's not like that it's not oh but there is another uh, you know um, so what what should i say a letter for that okay where we have got two decorators above them okay in turkish language but you know i would just couldn't write it properly okay so gaz would be i and another word is gazim so both of the vowels are front and both of them are rounded yol way path okay so or even road okay so yalam is basically in 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 yalam you have got two words two vowel sounds okay and both of them are harmonious in terms of part of the tongue that being back okay and rounded and uh, kes would be kesim both of them back and unrounded like uh, iki kesim wa i have two daughters so look at this one iki so we still in the first word iki we have got vowel harmony both of the both of the vowels are the same one and the same and in the second one it's uh, you know kesim that's also we have already discussed that so vowel harmony is a very good feature to dis to define a certain certain features of words and uh, we can say that you know we have got a vowel harmony so if the ha harmony is broken if there is no harmony so we expect another word for that okay that that would be the word division let's say but the point is that you know vowel harmony is found only in a, in a very few languages okay english does not exercise this feature and even uh, urdu and pashto and even arabic we do not have this kind of feature like that okay so it cannot be generalized so this is not a good feature okay to define the word in terms of vowel harmony and move on to another feature and that's called uh, that's based on stress stress is a you know a phonological feature okay and uh, it is almost in all of the languages but the issue is that in some of the languages it is fixed in some of the languages it is uh, flexible okay so you know uh, and even we have got uh, degrees too like uh, the stress always falls on a particular syllable of word perhaps the first or the last or perhaps on different syllables according to the structure of the word so the stress could be primary stress and secondary stress but let's say we we focus on the primary stress okay because that's like more important than any other degree of stress so in some of the languages it is fixed but you know and it's predictable too but the issue is that in english in russian and some other language it's not it's not the case okay so we cannot like uh, you know uh, we cannot just step or stamp this that this would be a criterion to define a word like um, you know what it means is that you know if you have got a stress primary stress so it means you know that we have got another word like for example in some of the languages okay the stress falls on the first syllable okay so wherever we we'll, we we hear or oh, we notice a stress so it means that a new word begins there okay so if you have got three primary stresses so it means we have got three different words in speech okay not in writing so that's that's uh, that's a very good point here but the issue is that again it's not a general feature of all of the languages okay like in english it's not predictable sometimes it falls on the first syllable sometimes somewhere in the middle and sometimes even on the last syllable uh, the last syllable could also receive stress so then in speech it's really difficult you may think of like a word which you may believe that it begins but actually that might that might be the last syllable of a certain word so that's the issue so stress cannot be taken as a criterion to you know distinguish one word from another or to define a word okay or to recognize it so this is my point here that it is always it's it's uh, you know it is always possible to determine from the stress where a word begins or ends in all only those languages where actually it is predictable but it's not the case uh, in in english in russian and some other languages where it is flexible okay so 
English has nothing quite like this. There are two features that are associated with the word stress. What we call full stress, okay? Like for example, in the word blackbird, we have got one stress, okay? So we say that this is a single word. And blackbird, okay, um, would be two, okay? Suppose. So <clears throat> uh, here, this is just an example. These are just examples given that, you know, blackbird is basically one and blackbird is, you know, uh, are two words, okay? Likewise, we have got blackboard and blackboard and greenhouse and greenhouse. So if you, like in this, in these cases, it's quite easier to recognize that, you know, the initial, the previous ones uh, are single words and the later are like two, two words, okay? But unfortunately, there is no consistent relation between stress patterns uh, in our writing convention, okay? Uh, writing is different and stress is different, okay? It's not limited to space that you see that, you know, blackbird, there is no space and there will be just one stress and blackbird, uh, we have got, you know, two stresses. That's not the case here, okay? Like, for example, the White House, for instance, is pronounced as if White House were one word. And truly, like, you know, uh, here the word in the in this uh, phrase, uh, the White House, okay, we see that, you know, we have got two spaces. So, uh, it should have been that, you know, we have three words here, but that's not the case, okay? Uh, when you pronounce it, so White and House, both of them seem to be a single word, okay? White House. So, like, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm somewhere near White House. So, White House seems to be a single word, but actually, in writing, they are two and they are distant, okay? They are distant from each other. So, what I'm trying to say is that, you know, writing is different. Stress is a feature, which is, uh, which is that of speech, okay? And uh, it's not very predictable here, okay? Like uh, tabletop, you know, tabletop here, we see that, you know, we have got a single stress here. Cushion cover, we have got a single stress here. Shoe polish, we have got a single stress here. Beehive, okay, uh, we have got two stresses. Cow shed and bird cage. So we have got two stresses there. So basically, the stress is not a very good feature, okay? Sometimes... If you uh, focus on stress, then you probably be, probably be mistaken uh, in identifying words. Why? Because look at the uh, look at another example. Okay, um, when we have got a lexical word and then uh, specifically a grammatical word, like in the case of beat and her. So in in this expression, we have the first one is a lexical word and the second is a grammatical word and uh, you are quite sure I know you uh, I'm sure that you know this feature that grammatical words are shortened okay um, in rapid speech so we say beta okay instead of saying uh, beat her in slow speech it could be possible to say beat her but usually um, the grammatical words are shortened and uh, even if they are not they do not receive stress. Stress falls on lexical words, okay? The contents words like the nouns and, pron uh, sorry, nouns and, uh, you know, um, um, verbs and adjectives and adverbs, okay? So the rest of the word classes do not receive stress. So what should we do with it? They would remain in the background. So are they not words? Huh? Like, for example, if, if, her follows uh, the word beat, okay? So in, like in this case, beta. So you see here, when you pronounce it, and when you when you hear, okay? When you hear this expression, uh, beta, you most probably hear one stress, only one. So it is almost equivalent to beta, okay? So, but, that there are two different words in that sense. Okay, in the in the previous uh, in the previous case, there are two. In this case, 
we have got just one word okay and just like you know we have got uh, kissed and ha okay so if you if you uh, pronounce this these two words together so you most probably you know the ending would be something kissed sister okay kister so it would be something sister why because you know the we have got a grammatical word her here yeah? so what i'm trying to say is that stress is not a feature with the help of which we could identify word we cannot do that okay we have much issues here look at another feature the third phonetic or phonological feature of speech that's juncture mostly juncture is basically a feature uh in by which you know <clears throat> um we could identify the word boundary okay this is a very good feature uh true it's true it works there like for example look at the words here okay um uh, uh here all of the vowels and the consonants they are one and the same okay like that stuff and that's tough okay i'm pronouncing them slowly but later when i uh, pronounce them uh, in my uh, you know regular uh, with with my regular uh, pace so it would be really difficult then okay to identify the word boundary and uh, you know a nice cake an ice cake look at this one keep sticking keeps ticking gray day great a so that's fine okay that stuff and that stuff so you know <clears throat> uh we could identify that you know uh, the first one the word boundary was between that and stuff in the second that's and tough in all of these examples it's quite easier to identify you know the word boundary okay an ice cake an ice cake so they are differ uh, they are different from one another in terms of juncture the juncture uh, helps us identify the word boundary okay fine but the issue is you know and, and there could be some features like aspiration like uh, this t sound okay t it is aspirated here okay in um, in the case here so this is fine okay but the 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 point is like you know that it's not possible in some other cases for example <clears throat> um like the, the juncture is related to the timing okay the timing of when we when the articulators move from one place to another fine but in some of the cases it's really difficult okay fine like for example <clears throat> um a tack n at acton so at ack if you focus on the first syllable of acton okay and if you compare it with a tack okay so they are different okay the juncture is clearly telling us uh, where the word boundary is okay so there is uh, there is no difference between a but but there is no difference between a tack and attack attack and attack okay look at this one in rapid speech it's really difficult here to see the word boundary okay attack and attack the juncture allows us to distinguish between two sequences of words they are divided differently but not between the first of these sequences and the single word okay when we have got a single word there it's really difficult then okay how like it's quite you know <clears throat> um it's quite difficult to to exactly and precisely um know where the boundary is like we do not know where to put the break between the and potato or the p and potato or the but and ato so it's kind of like you know it's uh, it's really difficult here okay fine so that's the one problem here and the second one if you look at this one like uh, uh, at all and at all at all and at all okay there again we have got some issue okay uh, it is pronounced as if it were at all okay in other words 
the juncture feature suggests the wrong word division in most of the cases. Okay, the reason here is that at all is treated as if it were a single word like nearly and wholly. So what's the crux? The, word, the crux is that that word division is not always signaled by juncture. Okay, it's really difficult there. Okay, so this juncture uh, cannot help us identify the word boundary everywhere. Okay, so phonetic definitions, <clears throat> the conclusion would be uh, of the word are perhaps as irrelevant as semantic ones. We just, we, we just like, you know, uh, we are in again in a ditch. So it's this, you know, the uh, as far as speech is concerned or any feature related to speech uh, is just in vain. Okay, we just cannot uh, identify word. Okay. We we do not know where to begin and and where does it start, uh, you know uh, where it ends. Okay, so the second approach is basically uh, not very fruitful. Okay, so we are left with the third approach. Let's see if that uh, is of any use in defining what word is. Okay, thank you. <clears throat>